Hello students, how are you today? You have been okay? Our topic for today is that is English language, that is unit 8. The lesson topic is water, that is water cycle, the water cycle. I need you to be familiar with these words first what water cycle mean. So, be familiar with these vocabularies. Look at them very carefully and try to practice the pronunciation of these words with your friends. Evaporation, transpiration, convection, condensation, advocation, and Precipitation, these are common vocabularies that are familiar in the listening text. Now, you are going to listen to a text about water cycle. Before you listen to the text, try to answer these questions. Look at these questions on the screen and try to discuss with your friends. The first question is, where does water that is on the ground can? Discuss with your friends and reflect your responses to your teacher. From where does water that is on the ground can? I'm sure that you do have background knowledge about where does water comes. And then try to answer these questions too. How does water get into the ocean? In what way water get into the ocean? What are the ways? And what are clouds made of? How does rain form? What is the formation? Or what are the main phenomena for forming a rain? And who can explain what cycle is? There are different kinds of cycles that we are familiar in our day-to-day -day life. It's not only water cycle, life cycle is another issue. Hopefully, you will give a lot of examples that are familiar with this issue. And finally, what do you think all those words listed on the screen? What do you think all those words listed on the screen? I mean the words are, here are the words that you have to be familiar. This is what I'm talking about. You are familiar. Be familiar with these words. So hopefully, this is the listening text that you are going to listen. Now I'm going to read the listening text and be 
attentively listen to the text I was talking about. I'm going to read the text two times. The sun heats water in oceans and seas, which causes it to evaporate a water vapor into the air. Water vapor is an invisible gas. Evaporation also occurs in other ways, from water in rivers and lakes, from water in ice and snow, and from water in soil. In addition, water vapor is released from plants into the air through the process known as transpiration. Water vapor is taken up into the atmosphere by rising air currents by a process known as convection, which causes warm air to rise. Cooler temperatures then condense the water vapor into clouds. Rising air currents take the vapor up into the atmosphere, where cooler temperatures cause it to condense into liquid water droplets in the air, which produces clouds. Precipitation in the form of rain or snow occurs when cloud particles collide, grow and then fall out of the sky. A vital factor in the process is known as advocation. This is a movement of water in the form of vapor. Clouds or precipitation through the atmosphere. Without advocation, very little rain would fall over land. Most rain falls back into the ocean, but also it falls onto land. It then flows over the ground as surface runoff. Some of this runoff sucks into the ground and the rest flows into the river. We then carry it to the ocean. Evaporation bay takes place and the water cycle continues. That's all. And then let me repeat. The reading text once more, and then you are expected to fill all the gaps correctly. Right. The first reading was just to get the idea what he's talking about. Now you have to fill these gaps. Let me repeat once more and for the last time. Listen very carefully. The sun heats water in oceans and seas which causes it to evaporate as water vapor into the air. Water vapor is an invisible gas. Evaporation also occurs in other ways, from water in the river and lakes, from water in ice and snow, and from water in soil. In addition, water vapor is released from plants into the air through the process known as transpiration. Water vapor is taken up into the atmosphere by rising air currents by a process known as convection, which causes warm air to rise. Cooler temperatures then condense the water vapor into clouds. Rising air currents take the vapor up into the atmosphere where cooler temperatures cause it to condense into liquid water droplets in the air, which produces clouds. Precipitation in the form of rain or snow occurs when clouds particles collide and then fall off the sky. A vital factor in the process is known as advocation. This is a movement of water in the form of vapor. Clouds or precipitation through the atmosphere. Without advocation, very little rain would fall over land. Most rain falls back into the oceans, but also it falls onto land. It then flows over the ground as surface runoff. Some of this runoff sucks into the ground and the rest flows into rivers. We then carry it to the ocean. Evaporation then takes place and the water cycle continues. Now, I'm going to give you some minutes and so as to complete this table. Take time.
That's all now. I'm sure that you have already checked to each other. Hopefully, you will reflect your answer. And then, so as to complete the activity, hopefully, let's come to the first one. What that? Evaporation. Say, what evaporation? How does it form? The sun heats water in oceans and seas, or different oceans, water bodies. That's it. That's interesting one. And how does it form? The release of water vapor into the air. The release of water vapor into the air. What is appropriate vocabulary? Wow, that's beautifully answered. That's interesting one. Good. Everyone has got transpiration. Many thanks. And conviction, that is a word, conviction. Oh, in what way did you put your answer? Wow, that's good. Interesting. Yeah, it's possible. Good. Very nice. Water vapor is taken up into the air. When water vapor is taken up into the air, yeah, it forms what? Convection. Water vapor is taken up into the air. It forms what? Convection. That's good. The form of rain or snow, the appropriate vocabulary, what will be? Yeah, that's interesting. Good. That is quite correct. Very nice. That is precipitation. Interesting. Precipitation. Okay. The movement of water in the form of vapor. Why that? Yeah, that's good. Yes, thank you so much. That's good. Advocation. And then finally, that is clouds. How does or when does clouds form? That's good. Clouds water droplets into the air. When the dro droplets lies in the air, clouds may form or clouds form. Very interesting one. I appreciate you. You have done your activities beautifully about this listening task. Now, let me give you that very nice. Yeah, I'm sure that before I'm going to complete this lesson, I would like to ask you some questions. The first one is that, how does water cycle occur? This implies that students can summarize what they have listened so far about water cycle. So different students may summarize in different ways. It's simply summarizing what you have heard about water cycle in the previous listening text. That's it. The second one is, what are the common phenomena for water cycle? And finally, what will happen when cloud particles collide? What will happen? In what way? You can discuss. It. So these are the activities, hopefully. Now let's go to see that reading. The tale of a tap. This is a reading text. Uh, in order to understand the text, you have to consider these important issues, which is available in your textbook on page 199 to 200. What this reading passage is talking about. So, as to understand every text, we have to consider these important pointers shown here now. What kind of text it is? The text matters, what he's talking about. Yeah. Before you read any text, you have to identify the text by itself. What kind of text is that? Is it familiar with the context of our way of life? Does it go with us? Hopefully, yes, you can look at the textbook on page given there on the screen at the same time in your textbook too. Right? People are just moving here and then by carrying their what jerry cans or their what pail right so as to look for something that's water it's okay so this is the common phenomenon that exists in africa too right this is a tale of a tap is written by somebody it's a text but it is a common phenomenon of all of us so the text matters what kind of text is it to understand what is about means that what kind of message does it have in other words 
What is the message talking about? We can see H issues, right? And then there are also some other vocabularies should be considered here now. Reading strategies are very important. Yeah. What kind of reading strategies do you learn? In what way do you understand the reading passage? It's very important. Good. Now, let's see. These are some strategies. I don't want to go there in detail. Right? So, what we need is that in what context do we understand the passage? These are the strategies which help us to understand every passage, whatever it is. Yeah, unless we know the strategies, right? To some extent, it may be that is challenging. And then we said this. Next to this, let us increase our word power. In what way do we increase our word power? What are the mechanisms so as to increase our word power? Right? In order to improve or enhance or promote your word power, different students do have different kinds of techniques. Yeah, those techniques might not be okay, adequate enough for us to learn a lot of vocabularies. That has to be scientific. Learning vocabulary needs scientific. We have to study and we have to use them in scientific ways. Right? Some of the students expect that learning a little of vocabulary by studying uh, dictionaries may be important for the sake of just challenging the difficulties of language at the same time to know the meaning of a certain word. So, just let me show you that some sample word is look at these words excite, excited, exciting, excitement, exciter, excitingly. Look, these words do have different meanings while they are using in different contexts in different senses. They all have different in meaning. So when you come here now, excite is a standard as a verb. Okay. We excite or we excite it with our performance. I'm excited about the proficiency of my listening skill. Somebody may say like that. In what sense does he use this? Right? He used just in different contexts. Excite is used as a verb. This is one way, way of what? Learning or just promoting your vocabulary power. Excited, just you learn it in the next session about participants. It's an adjective. Excited. Excited place. That is excited place. Excited. Okay, excited story. So as to narrate somebody else. You can say like that. Exciting, they are equally used here now. Excited and exciting are both what? Both are adjective. But in the first case, excited often used with what? A passive form. This one is exciting, that is an active form. Just we'll see it in the next session of participants. Right? Excited, exciting. Excitement, it is a noun. So, excitement is a noun. We have to know about this M A N T. Right? This excitement noun is derived from the verb that is a verb. Its derivation, its origin, its root word that is excite. This is a way. Okay, it's not necessary always to open your dictionary or to looking up every word this in the dictionary. Rather, sometimes you have to use these kind of techniques are important, which adds at the final position of a certain word. It may be that is a verb, it may be that is a noun, right? When you are adding that is a suffix, it, for, it changes what? Its form, right? Form. In other words, its origin was, or it, or its origin was, uh, has been, that is excite, and then it becomes that is suffix, excitement. It's a noun. Exciter is also a, it's a noun, definitely. ER is common. 
when you are in every uh, forms and every word forms when you add that is er it usually show that is a noun and excitingly this is an uh, adverb it's okay excitingly it's obvious, obvious that it's suffix and y stands for an adverb so these are the mechanisms the way how you uh, improve or empower your word building is you have to know about suffixes you have to know about prefixes prefixes usually stands for what for changing meaning it's okay they change meaning when you add a prefix in a certain root word it changes what meaning whereas in the case of suffix uh, the uh, final position i mean that right it changes what the form the form me in other words the, f the word might be changed into adjective it may change into the noun maybe that is an adverb etc okay that's all we have for today thank you so much Goodbye, students.